So now that we have the basic functionality of our interface built out, it's time to actually turn this into a digital asset because this isn't really a digital asset yet. This is just a subnetwork with a bunch of relative references linking it together. To turn it into a digital asset, we just right click on it and say digital asset, create new. And then this little dialog pops up. And then the uh, it'll give you a, a type name and then we can actually give it, you know, tell it what it's going to be called and everything like that. So in our case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this a couch generator. And I'm not going to use the author or the branch. This is just kind of building out what it's going to be, uh, what the asset's going to be called. I'll do a version though. We'll call it version 1.0. And then over here, it's going to be saved in the menu entry digital assets. So that's here in the tab menu. There's a digital assets section right here. A lot of them you can see are ones that I've made. And uh, so this is going to actually appear in this menu. Now we could make a different uh, menu entry if we wanted to right here, but we're just going to stick with digital assets. And then I'll just call this, um, we'll call this couch generator. And we'll save it to the Houdini user preference directory. That's cool. And you can see right here where it's going to be, where that file is going to be created. So I'm just going to click create. And now we have this type properties window that pops up. And this is a lot like the edit parameter interface that we were just dealing with. You can see here that it's got all of our parameters here, but it's got some other stuff like the ability to add, add interactive handles and stuff to our asset. So this is the part where we can continue to make some even cooler adjustments to our asset right now. So one of the things that I would want to do is actually add a handle. And one of the handles that I really liked, I really liked when we were inside this couch generator, I think it would be really cool if we could use this grid to actually control and place our couch. So I'm going to turn this handle into a handle for our HDA, and then we're going to mess with it and find out that there's going to be a couple other things that we're going to have to fix to make it better. But um, ultimately, it's going to be really cool to have this kind of functionality. So the way I'm going to do it is when, while I have this type properties window open, in case you didn't have this type properties window open, I'm going to just hit apply and accept and show you how to open it in case you don't have it open. Or if you accidentally close it, we can just go up here to our digital asset that we have right here and right click and say type properties. And I'll just bring this window back up so you can continuously edit this instead of the edit parameter interface. At this point, editing the parameter interface from up here on the gear icon isn't going to work the same way as what you're hoping for, I don't think. So here, what we can do is we can actually edit the node and the way the asset is saved on disk and whatnot. And so that every time we call it up, it's going to call up these same parameters. Um, you can even see now that we have this, because we've turned this into a digital asset, it will appear in our tab menu. So if I hit tab and start typing couch generator, you can see that we have another couch generator here that is uh, creating a couch for us, which is really cool. So here now, what I want to do is I have the type properties window open. I want to turn this handle that we have for our grid into a handle that controls our digital asset. I can just right click and say, export handle to digital asset. I click that. And then if we look up over here on this interactive tab, you can see that it has taken this grid transformer and populated all of these fields. I'm just going to hit apply and accept. And so now when we go up here on our couch generator and I select it, you can see that it has our handle here and we can start using it the way we would want to use it, um, which is really cool. One of the things that we might want to address is that we can't just simply grab this and rotate it. Like if we wanted to rotate our couch by 90 degrees, it's going to mess things up. Let's check it out. I'm just going to grab this axis right here and start rotating. You can see our couch just gets all sorts of messed up. <laughs> and the reason for this is because this rotating this initial grid, this whole system is built off of bounding boxes that are dependent on centering this thing along a certain axis. So we can't really, we don't really want to control this rotation on the grid right here. What we can do is instead have this rotation control a different uh, node inside of our network. So you can see down here that adding this handle here has actually created this extra rotation parameter down here at the bottom that we don't really want control over. We don't want to be able to control the grid at this stage. What we do, what we would want to control, I'm just going to reset that to zero. What we would want to control is maybe a different transform that comes down here and rotates our couch after all of the work has been done. So I can throw down another transform here and wire it in right above the, above this null. 
And now if we had our full couch and we instead linked that rotation value that we had to this transform right here, things would be working out a lot better for us. So what I'm going to do is actually promote this rotation onto our type properties. So let's go back out here to our subnet. I'm going to right click and say type properties and go back to the parameters window that we have here. And then I'm going to jump back inside and grab our transform rotation. And I'm going to drag this in here and put it right under the center parameter for our geometry up here. And so now what I can do is hit apply. And if I go over to the interactive tab here, you'll see that this is more or less what all of the controls of the handle of that grid are mapping to. So here you can see that it by default is mapping to this TX, TY, and TZ parameter as it appears on our parameters list here. You can see our, our size and center TX, TY, and DZ values are going to be on this node. So up here, center, this is TX, TY, and DZ. And that, that corresponds to the original uh, grid that we created, but this rotation R3X, R3Y, and R3Z, these, this R3 parameter isn't associated with that same grid. It's associated with our transforms uh, that we added at the end of the network. So going back over to the interactive tab, we can look at this RX, RY, and RZ parameter and map it to a different thing. So I'm not seeing the rotation appearing yet in this list. So what I'm going to do is hit apply and accept. And then I'm going to grab this couch generator and reopen the type properties. And now from this list, we could either type in R3X here, or we could select it from this dropdown. We should be able to see R3X, R3Y, and R3Z here in this list. So if I click R3X here, R3Y here, and R3Z here, and hit apply and accept, now on our couch generator, uh, what we should be able to do is grab our handle and it looks like it's not working yet. I'm going to click a box. I'm going to make a box just so I have something to click away to and go to this box and go back to the couch generator. And now you can see that our handle and our couch are kind of lined up now. So if I grab this and I rotate it around, you can see that it's sort of putting our couch wherever we're doing this. But you'll notice that there's a little bit of drift here, and that's an issue. The reason for it being is that the actual rotation that we're doing down here, let's just dive inside the network real quick. You can see we're adjusting the size of this grid, but where this transform is happening, this transform's pivot is located at the origin, not at the center of our grid, which exists over here now. So what we can actually do is we just want to make sure that we anchor this transform to the center of our object at all times, and then it should behave a little bit more predictably. So the way we can do that is just with a simple little expression here on the pivot transform. So I'm just going to spin this down and under pivot translate uh, X, Y, and Z, we can actually just lock that to the center of the object using a really simple expression called centroid. So pivot translate, I'm going to set to centroid. And then I'm going to open parentheses and set it to the centroid of the incoming object, which is the zeroth input and along the first axes, which computers count from zero. So it's the uh, zeroth axes. So we've got that. I'm just going to hold, hit uh, control A and then control C. And I'm going to copy this into the next field. So I'm going to hit tab. That puts us in the Y parameter. I'm just going to hit control V here and then set the axis to one. So that's now the X, Y axis. So that's the second axis here. And then again on the Z axis, I'm going to paste that in here and we're going to set this to the center around the Z axis. So now when we jump up to the top of our network and grab this and rotate it around, you can see that it's um, allowing us to uh, kind of position our couch wherever we want in a way that makes sense. We can rotate it and change the size of it and it's working out fantastically. We can adjust the thickness of the arms, uh, the arm thickness and so on. So if we can even make the thickness go negative. So there's other things that we can do to kind of prevent ourselves from being able to do uh, illegal maneuvers like this. Um, so for example, if we wanted to prevent our arms from being able to go below a certain thickness, we could actually set that here in our type properties. If I right click and choose type properties again, and we grab our arm thickness, we can go here and set a range. So this range can go from negative one to one. We can actually uh, limit it 
from only being able to go from, let's say 0.1 to one. And so if I hit apply, and then I try to grab this arm thickness, I can't bring it below a certain point. I can't, I mean, I can technically change that to go below if I wanted to, but our slider distance now is defaulting to sort of a more reasonable range. And this can be done with all sorts of parameters. I'm not gonna go through and kind of um, clean up all of these parameters like so, but you can do that if you want to. So to kind of lock in these changes, I'm gonna hit apply and accept on the type properties window. And um, I'm also gonna go over here and right click and say save node type. And that can kind of help if we, if we make some adjustments where we're only kind of messing with this network inside of our digital asset and we need it to save out to every single asset that we create, we can kind of do that here. So now that we have uh, right clicked and said save node type, we can actually create as many of these as we want. So let me just uh, create another couch generator. And I'm going to drop that in there and let's put the display flag here. Now my couch generator here by default has come in on the, uh, it's kind of crooked. And so I don't want that. I want my default to be a little bit more reasonable than that. I don't, I think things should be at least axis aligned and then allow the user to change the rotation as they see fit. So our default here of 34 degrees rotation uh, is no good. And I'm gonna go and adjust that in the type properties as well. So let's right click on uh, this node and say, uh, click on type properties. And then here, back where we have our parameters defined here, let's find that rotation parameter that is, uh, that's wrong. So this is the rotation parameter here. And if we go over to the channels menu right here, we can see what our default values are going to be set to when we initialize the node. And we've got this 34 degrees baked in there because we created this setting while 34 degrees was entered in. So I'm just gonna put a zero there and hit apply and accept. And it says, can't save oper operator definition from a node that is locked to match its current definition. Pressing unlock and save will allow editing of contents of the node and for it to be saved. So let's say unlock and save. You can see that we get this unlock icon right here and we'll hit apply and accept. And I'm just going to delete this node now that we did it. And we'll just hit tab and type in couch generator again and drop it here. And you can see now that this new couch is, is aligned to the world axis. And so I can create this couch. I can say, all right, this is going to be my main couch. And I can just kind of uh, maybe uh, drag it back in this way a little bit. And then I can option drag this off to the side or alt drag it off to the side and we can create a new couch. I'm just gonna rotate that by 90 degrees and we can place it over here and maybe make it a little bit skinnier. And so now we can merge these two together. And um, this is kind of like we're creating a little living room set here, you know? Um, you can just grab this one again and maybe move it a little bit more. Maybe I'll make a, a love seat version of this and wire in it as well. So I'm just gonna grab this, drag it over here and rotate it around and uh, maybe extend it a little bit so it looks like it's, it's a love seat version. And uh, you know, maybe if we decided we wanted all these cushions to be a little bit uh, thicker, we could just uh, grab all of these nodes at once and just maybe find the cushion sec section and make all the seat cushions thicker on all of those couches all at once. So you can see how this proceduralism becomes really, um, really nice to have for making massive edits like this for large amounts of um, geometry. A lot of uh, game assets are built this way. You know, you can take this HDA and throw it into the Unreal Engine or into Unity to use it to help lay out and create procedural geometry for video games really easily. It's just really nice to be able to have this kind of flexibility. So while this is a little bit more advanced than really beginner level, I thought it was really cool to be able to share with you all these different um, kind of like neat techniques that you can get into with Houdini when you really try and dive into um creating digital assets and creating procedural geometry. So I hope that you found this uh fun and I will see you again soon in another lesson. Thanks a lot.